this is a requested video. Um, I want to point out two things of requested videos. Uh, one, I don't do them for free. Uh, a lot of people, uh, hey, did you quit? Hey, Captain! And there's an eight page email that comes through and explaining their entire life history. Hey, can you write a bag? You do a big video about this. And I think I'm going to spend, you know, 30 minutes of my time reading, not to mention the time it takes to film the damn thing, and then edit it, and then upload it, and then, you know, publish it on YouTube. That takes time. So, yeah, the only, I do request videos uh, about any topic, as long as you pay me, but you're going to pay me. That's the other thing. And then here's the other thing. Don't send me a request and then send me a donation that you think I'm going to charge you like, ah, it's $20, and that's $15. No, I'll, I'll tell you what it's going to be. Uh, you see, I, you send me the email, send me the request, I read through it, the clock starts ticking then. So don't make it an eight page email with the history of your life. Get to the point and be succinct because I start billing and incorporate that into my final bill. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, if you have a requested video, more than happy to do it, but you're, one, you're gonna pay, and two, uh, I'll tell you what it's going to be based on the complexity and the amount of research and the amount of time I gotta put it together. So anyway, got a request from somebody, and he said he wanted it on, on uh, YouTube, which is all right. I was gonna email, but he wants it on YouTube. I'm not gonna mention names. Um, <clears throat> and this is a, it was a long email, and so I had to filter it, and I had to figure out what the person was asking, so it came down to basically three things. Uh, the man is 38 years old. He lives with his parents. He just got out of the military, so don't, don't think, oh, what a loser. No, he just got out of the military, and, <clears throat> and he's now living at home. And now he's getting back into quote unquote civilian life. And I had a couple questions about what it primarily is uh, women. So the first uh, question is the myth of equality. Is it a double standard uh, where women live with their parents and there's literally no shame associated with that as opposed to a man? And uh, in line with that, are women accorded benefits by society such as legal, marriage, affirmative action, and otherwise that kind of provides a double standard? Um, and the answer is yes, hell yes. Women are, it, 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 you, you have, we went from a traditional uh, social contract where men would do certain things in society, women would do certain things in society, and then with second or third wave feminism, whatever you want to call it, women want to be men. They want not only to be, um, have equal rights, but they, they did want to be treated equal, I recall. Uh, but when, it, when the rubber really hits the road, they don't want to give up their benefit, their bennies and the benefits that they had under the traditional social contract system. So they still want to have, you know, uh, you know, they still want it to be okay that if they live at home when they're 30 uh, and there's no social uh, problem there, they still want, uh, they still want to be the helpless little girl and, oh, can you lift heavy things, Mr. Strongman? Uh, stuff like that. Um, now, uh, should you take advantage of this? It, it, or, well, let's say this. One, is it fair? No, it's not fair. But life isn't fair. That, it is what it is. And humans, men and women, doesn't matter who, usually will take advantage of any opportunity they have and will not consider the hypocrisy or the morality of that decision. And you should be doing the same thing. Like, uh, yeah, good, I'd say good for you living at home. Save some money, help out your parents. Uh, I used to be of the philosophy that, you know, I was, at 18, I was out. I've always supported myself since I was 18, never moved back home, never asked for any money. Um, I'm truly independent. That's actually becoming a rarer thing. Even people my age in their 40s, it's, it's, it's amazing how many people in their late 30s and early 40s still are getting handouts by their goddamn parents. So <clears throat> just because they don't live at home doesn't mean they aren't effectively being subsidized. Like daddy still pays for little princess's credit card. Uh, you know, juniors is getting bailed out by dad loaning him money. Um, I know people personally uh, who, you know, older than me and still live off of their parents, still parasiting off of their parents. Uh, is it right? Is it moral? Is it just? No, but you know what? Go ahead, live off. This is like where I say, you know, back in the olden days, I was very proud of the fact I was independent, never collected a government check. Now I'm all for collecting government money. Absolutely. If society, and not just in how we interact between the sexes, but if society, this democracy, has voted in someone like a, a veritable socialist like Barack Obama, and they're going to change the rules and the laws that socialism is the way to go, all right, those are the rules. You abide by it. Collect as much government money as possible. Um, so, <clears throat> yes, definitely take advantage. 
And no, uh, women really aren't living up to their, because that, if that was the original question, I couldn't tell in the, in the text. Women really aren't li uh, living up to their equality, this new social contract we have. They, they really aren't. Some women do. There are some women out there. Uh, some women are kicking a lot more ass than men. Uh, you know, you got your, your IT chicks, your, your surgeons, your doctors. There's plenty of women. There's plenty of people on both sides. But in general, most women are, are laughably failing at uh, living up to this new social contract where they're carrying their own weight. All they've primarily have done, not, not all of them, but what they have primarily done is, I'm independent, I'm a strong independent woman, look how independent I am. And they still need government handouts, the single mom phenomenon, and more importantly, the what I like to call ego employment, which is where uh, women quote unquote have jobs, but they're not real jobs, like elementary school teachers, social workers. These are jobs that were just made to uh, feed the egos, support the egos of women to make them think they have careers when they really don't. You know, nonprofits, things like that. They're not engineers, they're not plumbers, they're not surgeons, they're not uh, welders, they're not uh, carpenters. They're, they don't produce anything of value. They immediately go into the employ of the government, which is no different than going from daddy to another daddy, except this daddy instead of chores, like, okay, do your homework, clean your bed, or we'll make your bed, you know, we'll clean the bathroom. Um, the government says, okay, sit here, act like you're working, and talk to these disadvantaged people and give them other people's money. That's kind of like, those are the new chores. So it, it really uh, hasn't changed. <laughs> the financing of relationships is a question, too. Um, let me consult my notes. Okay, uh, since women get affirmative action, constantly complain about the wage gap, but they still expect uh, employers to bend over backwards for them. All right, so you're saying like, look, they, 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 uh, they're failing, once again, failing to meet up to the social contract. Uh, there's a wage gap, they'll constantly complain about it. They will, they'll, like, he cites Mar Marissa Meyer, the CEO of Yahoo, who uh, basically canceled all the work from home and then set up uh, child care facilities to take care of primarily her child but then other people's children as well and what he's worried about is wait a minute men never got these benefits when we were in the working world what's what's with this all this accommodation and uh um and employers bending over backwards to make it so that women have an easier time and an easier uh, uh, career um yeah that's all happening but he answered it right there when he said the wage gap what about the wage gap the wage gap is empirical economic proof that there is still some justice in the labor market. And I, it's not a wage gap, let's be very clear about it. It's an earnings gap. It's how much do they earn. And women earn less than men because they don't work as hard as men. The vast, this isn't, this isn't an opinion. I know a lot of women get pissed off. They, no, no, women don't work as hard as men, period. They don't major in as difficult subjects. They do not study as hard. They major, you can't even call it a discipline. I mean, what was it? I think two thirds of the worthless degrees are awarded to women. Oh, and they constantly tell like, women earn the majority of degrees. Yeah, and what? Unicorn studies? Chocolate tasting? I have my master's in chocolate tasting. Uh, it, it's not engineering, it's not accounting, it's not in fields that matter and ultimately result in genuine economic production. So you should, yes, society is bending over backwards. Employers are bending over backwards. They're gonna give the affirmative action. They're gonna give preferential contracts at the government. But in the end, the fact that there's a wage gap is proof that still parts of the, at least the private sector economy is working. That if a woman comes in with a worthless degree and then she decides to work for five years, then she decides to get pregnant, takes a three month leave of absence, then she goes back, then she gets another three months, yeah, she is going to be paid, you know, I, I forget what the latest wage gap figure is, but it's roughly 75%. She will be paid 75% less. Right? Uh, but then keep in mind when you adjust for things like time on the job, quality of education, quality of degree, women earn the same as men. Sometimes they earn more because, again, employers are bending over backwards. Um, so don't get, you know, in terms of like finance and relationships, should you pay? Should they, all right, if women are really going to be equal now, should no. If, uh, if, if, uh, if we're going to treat women like equals, you should, treat, you know, take your best friend Bill or whoever your best friend's name is. You open the door for Bill? Do you pay for Bill's uh, food? No. 
Because Bill is Bill. Bill's a guy. Not that you don't like Bill. You, you're rather agreeable with Bill. Uh, but if women want to be, if they want to be, and they claim to be, to be wanted to be treated as equals, then by God, you give it to them in spades. Uh, I, I was a perfect example. I was at Zion National Park. There's a shuttle. And, uh, you know, bus type shuttle. I sit down and a gal comes up and she's got a little baby infant and there's no seats left. I want to give up my seat. I'm not. No. Too bad. And a lot of women say, yeah, you're mean. You're mean. No, 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 no. I'm giving women what they wanted. I am treating them as equals. If that was Bill, my buddy Bill, he'd be able to stand and carry the kid with no problem. He wouldn't even think about it. So that's yeah, if, if, if we're going to treat women, if women really want to be treated as equals, we really want this equality stuff, then men have to step up to the plate and really treat them like equals. You have to turn off your natural biological Darwinistic desire. Like, hey, uh, would you like to sit down? Let me get that for you. Will you please fuck me? Which is basically all it is. You got to turn that off and say, you know, I wouldn't mind fornicating with that girl. Um, but you know what? She looks younger. She ain't World War II. I think I'm just going to treat her like Bill. So uh, there's that. Uh, then the final thing, uh, the final question, which I had to cipher through. Therefore, are women entitled to chivalry, paid for dates, and traditional treatment? Um, and the answer is generally no, but it really does depend. And um, let me get over here. It's a little bumpy road. I'll give you guys an epileptic seizure. You, you can't categorize women all into one group because. There, there isn't. There just there isn't. It's unfair. It's like these these Nazi skinhead types on the internet. Um, they'll come to my site and they'll they'll. Re I'm very critical of the black community and the uh, black uh, race. I hold them up to the same step. I treat them as equals. Say, hey, you're screwing up. Hey, you're fucking up. Hey, uh, ba 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 ba. But I don't hate blacks. I don't hate any group of people in particular. Anyway, the the the. Uh, the skinheads, Nazi, racist types, they come to my site and they think I'm one of them. And they're like, oh yeah, dude, man, yeah, you like to screw the blacks. And it's like, no, 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 you don't understand. I have black friends. Uh, I have a, a, a quite a large uh, following of black readers, viewers, followers, because I treat them like fellow human beings. I treat them as equals. Uh, I enjoy their company. And then they get all pissed off. Oh, you traitor to the race. It's a different thing. But the larger point is analogous to this. You can't throw everyone into the same group. You have to realize that there are individual people. And the same thing is with women. I have some wonderful women in my life. They're wonderful, they're beautiful, and they're the traditional types. And yes, I treat them with chivalry. Like my female friends, that I don't think there's one female in my group of friends that isn't traditional. I, we wouldn't have them in our group of friends anyway. Uh, so like Linda Baby, Rachel Baby, uh, Janelle Baby, Julie Baby, we always say Baby. He's put that at the They're always baby. Hey, baby. Julie, baby. How you doing? And they like that because they're traditional. And I will open the door for them. I will get them drinks. I will go dancing with them. I will help them with manly things around the house that's kind of hard for them to do. I will. You want to know why? Because they're nice. They've cooked for me. They're very nice to us guys. They dress up. They dress very pretty. They maintain themselves. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. My girlfriend's the same thing. I would not date my girlfriend if she was this modern day. <laughs> you go, girl. Me, 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 me. I mean, she's got a degree in accounting. She's an accountant. She carries her own weight. All that other stuff. So, don't assume. You know, let let they'll they'll flush themselves out. They'll flush themselves out, and you'll find out very quickly whether a they're a traditional World War II type of gal. Or whether they're a modern day 70s burnt out hairy armpit hippie baby boomer type or they're modern day you know uh rape culture rape obsessed uh millennial tatted up uh, feminist bleh, it's not even a word for it creature i guess is the best way to put it um so yeah now in general policy are they entitled to chivalry? No. If you don't know the girl from Squat, you can assess. You kind of, kind of read. This is where stereotyping comes in and prejudgment comes in. And absolutely, you should. Well, that's prejudgment. You damn right it is, because I don't have time to interview everybody. So, like the gal here, as an example again on the Zion bus, I looked at her. She's younger, generally speaking, and most women that age voted for Barack Obama. Guess what? You're probably there's a good chance, like an 85% chance, 
Yeah, oh wow, look at all the sheep in them. Wow, look at that, there's a cowboy with a horseshoe. Oh, that is so cool. Straight out of the West. Oh, dude. I'm in the West, not that you couldn't tell. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, you have to, to kind of judge it. Um, now, when you go on dates, no, absolutely not. You, you all, because you're younger, you're always going to assume, statistically speaking, that the girl is of the feminist soul. She has to prove herself to be more traditional, okay? Once that happens, yeah, there's nothing wrong with buying a girl a, a, a drink or a dinner or taking her out dancing or getting her flowers. Absolutely, there's nothing wrong with that. But the girl's got to earn it. She's got to go, she has to be adhering to the old social contract. If they're adhering to the new social contract, then by, out of their own words, they didn't want flowers, they don't want chivalry, they, uh, they want to be treated like guys, so treat them like guys. But I don't know why you would hang out with a guy for romantic purposes. <laughs> it's, it's not fun. It's just, if you want to hang out with guys, go hang out with guys. You'll play poker and all that. That's not to say, here's the other thing. People say, what about the tomboy? Tomboys are cool, I, but they can also always be feminine. These tomboys are just chicks who have like cooler tastes in sports and activities. That doesn't mean they can't dress up and they don't adhere to traditional stuff. Still, you'll be able to very quickly tell. Um, you know, bumper stickers is always a great way to go. Ask them what they majored in. The signs are all there. You can figure it out. Um, so yeah, don't, don't. Uh, a lot of people, especially in this Manister world, they want to blanket hate women or, or blanket criticize women, or they just blame women. No, you can't. You can't do it because there are some good quality dames out there. So, as a default policy, no, no chivalry to any women in public. You don't help out women. You treat them just like guys as you would in public. And until you personally get to know people in your personal relationships, that's when you decide whether or not, do you open the doors? Do you get the, uh, you know, I, I'll get, you know, there's a, I like, uh, I'll get chocolates. Girls like chocolates, names like chocolates. You know, you get like not a, not a whole box, but you know, get one or two truffles, or you know, go down to Macy's, whatever you get, and you give it to. They like that shit. That's nice. It shows that you like them being feminine, and they appreciate it. Well, good lord, could you imagine buying a nice dainty truffle for a short hair cut butchy feminist type? They don't deserve it. Give them a. Here's a hacksaw, Mr. Equal. <laughs> Here's some Barbasol. <laughs> So hopefully that answered your question there, Zach. It's, it's kind of a policy issue. You've got to play it case by case. You know, don't treat anyone poorly. Don't treat them like crap. But don't don't get rid of the old contract is gone. Get rid of the old social contract. Replace it with the new until they prove that they deserve the old contract. That's all we got. Toodles.